Nations that decided to uh, help companies and employees in the country. Luxembourg came with a large number of measures, uh, screening, large-scale screening, then other measures in uh, employment, uh, assistance to employees. There, was, um, a, a, there were a number of measures to support uh, employment. In the heart of the crisis, two employees out of five could benefit from these measures. Public authorities came with solutions for schools. Also, Luxembourg is part of the OECD countries that closed less schools than others, only 48 days for primary schools and 34 for secondary schools. Thanks to this continuity, we do not detect negative systematic effects on uh, the learning of pupils. In Luxembourg also, there's a high level of uh, trust uh, for public authorities, and this trust also helped in the efficiency of prevention measures decided by public authorities in Luxembourg. The population accepted this me these measures easily. Also, um, the increase in mortality is 60% less than the OECD average, but there are still possibilities to uh, improve the preparation for crisis in Luxembourg, and the resilience as well, I think, of four elements. First, to consolidate the use of data in public decisions. It's important, it's important to mobilize scientists in the task force COVID-19. And now Luxembourg, thanks to the help of the scientific committee, was able to manage that crisis. But of course, this must be sustained in the future. In order to anticipate crisis, we need governments that have the capacities to produce credible data continuously and to be able to analyze that data. Luxembourg would be better off with a permanent scientific uh, board with more transparency. Secondly, the pandemia showed some structural weaknesses in the health system. This country, Luxembourg, is highly dependent on trans-border workers in the health sector, and uh, there was uh, no appropriate information system at the beginning of the crisis. This report, this evaluation, shows that now uh, Luxembourg must adapt its health system in order to prepare for the future. and to, uh, to um, alleviate the negative effects of crisis. Today, two, or three, two out of three um, citizens of Luxembourg say that their mental health um, was uh, not as good during the, the crisis. And it is now important to improve prevention of risks and a more uh, multidisciplinary approach of care. Thirdly, even if we do not see any major problem in schools, some analyses show that there were some problems for those pupils that had problems already. And it is important to come with um, individual support measures, and it's important to think about that for the future so that we can adapt to pupils in need. And um, finally, the financial situation of most uh, companies and employers was preserved, but some uh, people were not as well protected. It is the case of uh, independent workers uh, who were not covered by the measures to maintain employment. Only 40% of independent workers are members of the mutuality that give them an access to, access to um, health 
and um, health benefits and, uh, um, uh, and, 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 and vacations uh, for family reasons. It is important to have a um, continuous specific system to protect workers, such as short-term work. It is important to improve um, access to, um, to unemployment uh, allowances, uh, also for, the, for, for younger people um, in a time of a crisis. I'd like to conclude. Thank you. Um, thank you for, for your trust. Thank you for, for trusting us, the OECD, to, to draw the lesson of the crisis for you. Countries have a lot to learn from each other so that they can prepare for future crises. And um, I'm looking forward to meeting you again in November for the ministerial conference. Uh, we'll talk about how to reinforce uh, democracy and strengthen trust under your presidency in Luxembourg. Our ministers will talk about the responses to, to, to give to our challenges today. And uh, we are transparent. And this shows that Luxembourg is a leader in the field. OECD will keep on supporting Luxembourg in their efforts to increase their resilience to crises and to ensure a sustainable and inclusive recovery. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général, cher Mathias. Thank you uh, very much, uh, the Secretary uh, General, the ministers, these me the members of the press. Uh, I'm here with Mrs. Linnet in a press conference in front of the media, and I remember what we experienced for a long period, we had, uh, we had numerous press conferences after ministerial meetings. We uh, were meeting uh, the press, we were meeting the, the public to tell them about the decisions made by the government. I'd like to insist, before every press conference, we had a talk with Poland. As the Secretary General said, it's important to talk to the elected people, to Parliament. At the beginning, we were in a state of a crisis. We had to take emergency measures. And uh, um, we, we noticed that we could uh, work uh, um, in, in, in a, in a, in a, with more democracy. Uh, a crisis system is, is, can be uh, a democratic system, and we force uh, uh, democracy with a, a lot of uh, uh, bills and drafts. And we knew we had some changes to do, and we made them. We are here to draw the first lessons of that crisis. We are looking at how the government managed the crisis. Politically, when there's a, a crisis, we should not to uh, uh, political policies only. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not the time to to say, well, you know, um, this was bad. This was a bad. Decision. It's important to learn from what we did, and this is why it's so important to have an external glance from uh, OECD independently. OECD analyzed, talked. They 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 asked us questions. They asked a large number of people. So it was good to have that external report, to know what we did well, what happened, and what uh, can be uh, improved in the future. Yes, I admit, we were asked a lot of questions, but sometimes we couldn't find the answer. It was hard to make decisions. As a, go as a government like, like us, it, it's hard to, to uh, limit liberties and freedoms. It, it was hard. It must remain exceptional. It should not become a standard. Limiting liberties cannot be continuous. We had to take exceptional measures. Today, mortality rate due to COVID is, is lower because well, thanks to vaccination. And, but we can't say there's no COVID anymore. We see the figures. We had uh, the director 
of uh, the World Health Organization, said, we are not fully protected. We need to remain vigilant. And it is important to do our duties, to think about what we did well or not as well, and it's important to learn. Now, I do not want to be longer. It's important for me to listen. It's important for me to learn. It's important to know uh, what homework you give us politically, and, and I, I, I'd like a, a debate. To, I want a debate to take place in Parliament. We want to talk about what you are going to tell us, uh, uh, incentives, uh, positions, opinions, your comments. I think that uh, a lot of young people suffered a lot. You said it, Mr. Secretary General, for us. Education was a priority. Uh, we have to think of a future of a generation. So it's not up to us to give us scores, points, good points, bad points. We did not want to do that ourselves. It's important to have an external eye. And uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary General, and thank you, OECDs. Thank you. Thank you for your report. And uh, uh, after a crisis, we cannot say we hope we have no crisis. We need to learn from this crisis. So the next time, you never know, uh, we could be uh, stronger. And um, uh, we must prepare. We must, we must think. I, I must say, you know, I, it was a hard job to be a uh, prime minister during that period. We, 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 we received questions, but we did not always have answers. And now there's a balance sheet, there's a report, there's uh, an evaluation. And now I'm sure that, yeah, we did make mistake, but in the future we'll be stronger. Of course, I do not hope, but maybe one day there'll be a next crisis. Thank you. Secretary General, the experts of OECD, it's a great pleasure to welcome you here in Luxembourg today. Personally, I am a bit emotional also. I, I, I read my notes, everything that I uh, wrote during the crisis, and, and I hope that one day I can put that behind me. What did we do? We, we played. We played a lot of um, games that we did not know. We did not know the rules. We were sure of nothing. What was important was solidarity, was to be together and make the right decisions for our, our countries. After this very vague uh, period, very quickly, we, we, we decided that uh, we needed an external glance. We uh, are today managing um, the end of this uh, pandemic, but we also want to anticipate for the future. So this, this exercise is very useful for us, for our teams, all those that worked um, during that uh, assessment period. It was important to, to remember, you know, when, when you are in, in the heart of the action, you tend to forget afterwards. You know, you live, you live the moment, day after day. So it was really, really useful to to sit down and think and, and remember and, and, and remember what we did day after day. Also look at the consequences and it's important to have people um, from outside of this country. We, we do not have enough distance. We are uh, still emotional today. We were uh, criticized a lot during the crisis and it's important now that uh, we are assessed and I'm looking forward to to uh, listening to uh, your uh, reports. Uh, a lot of um, uh, things are already on the agenda. Mental health, we have a plan for uh, mental health. And um, uh, we will uh, know more about the details of your report when we read it. I'd like to thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great step forward. I hope that one day we can turn the page and uh, prepare for the future 
whatever happens. We were not prepared for such a, a, a serious crisis before uh, COVID. We want to be prepared for the future if that happens again. We want to be able to close that uh, period. There was a, a hard period. It was, those were hard times. I'm nervous. I'm still nervous. I, I, I haven't been so anxious and nervous for years, but uh, it's a great moment. Thank you very much. I'd like to add a couple of things. M maybe you don't know, but yesterday the Constitutional Court in Luxembourg declared that the measures we took are not against the, con the, the Constitution. There was an appeal, and uh, yeah, I, was, uh, I really wanted to tell you this. And uh, I'd like to thank our staff in hospitals. Uh, and um, this year again, for our National Day, they, uh, they were there in the streets of, of Luxembourg. And uh, I'd like to thank you for, for, for your trust. It was a, a, a difficult period. We represent the government, but then there are also uh, other political parties. Uh, um, uh, we were all hand in hand. We worked hand in hand. And uh, it's not only two people that made the decisions. All, all the, 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 the people in, in government, in parliament, uh, took, uh, took the decisions together. And uh, all parties were, were on board. Thank you uh, very much. Just, just a little uh, precision. Let's move on to the second part of our press conference. Uh, I've asked the um, OECD representatives to come and join us. Thank you so much to the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, to the Health Minister, and to the Secretary General of the OECD for having uh, opened this conference that launches our study. Uh, many thanks to the Ministry of State and to the High Commissioner to National Protection for their technical involvement in this project in the course of the past year. It's been a huge project for the OECD. It's a 262 pages report. It's full of data that we collected from the OECD databases, but also from our work, and we collected them also from the different ministries. So the goal of this report is to assess and learn the lessons of the responses given by Luxembourg to the COVID-19 crisis. It is based on an analytical framework developed by the OECD that you can see here. Um, that includes three strands, preparation to the pandemic, management of the crisis, and response and recovery policies. Luxembourg is the first country that has asked the OECD to carry out such an assessment, so it is also a learning time also for the other uh, OECD member countries, not only for Luxembourg, and as such, it is an example. And it is an exemplary process in terms of transparency and desire to learn, and the willingness to accept a general assessment of what we did during that period that was very difficult for everyone. The results of the study um, must be seen from the perspective of Luxembourg and it, the, the size of its population, a very small population, its um, very broad economic opening, which was um, openness, which was a strength, but also a source of threats and dangers. And there is a very high level of trust in public institutions in Luxembourg. The results of this uh, study enable us to draw general conclusions that can apply to all the OECD countries. And that was very useful for all the OECD countries too. So the first message of the report is that if Luxembourg had, an, had not anticipated the risk of uh, um, coronavirus, the pandemic risk was, um, had been forecast, but not the COVID-19. Uh, co so the Luxembourg could use as a support its mature risk management system to avoid uh, um, major uh, issues. So as soon as the first case of COVID-19 appeared on the national territory, the prime minister activated this crisis unit. This 
um, activation date is the earliest one among the OECD countries. It allowed us to, it enabled us to anticipate um, the propagation of the virus in the country very quickly. Once the crisis um, happened, the recommendation of the OECD about risk major, the 2000, well, about major risk governance from 2014 advises the establishment of a clear leadership and setting of specific structures in order to secure the interministerial coordination of the crisis. That's what Luxembourg did by entrusting the steering of the crisis to the High Commissioner for National Protection and the Minister of Health, and by adapting on a regular basis the organization of its crisis unit to face the, the challenges raised by the successive waves of the pandemic. The system that has been put in place must be made sustainable for the future in order to enable Luxembourg to secure a robust follow-up, a robust monitoring of the crisis that will um, happen in the future. So, in March 2020, a scientific committee responsible for advising the government was created, particularly to meet the needs of the crisis, but no such formalized system bringing together intersectoral scientific expertise existed before, so there was none. But trust in scientific expertise is built through time in order to keep a high level of confidence of the citizens towards public authorities and in order to make sure that there is a quick access to the best possible expertise in case of crisis, Luxembourg could establish a sustainable scientific advice a council and a transparent governance. As the OECD data show about the, the evaluations of the responses to COVID-19, the crisis communication of the governments was on the whole efficient during that period. It was the case in Luxembourg too. The crisis communication services were able to mobilize many, very many channels to reach a very broad target group and be able to listen to the expectations of the citizens. The messages were translated in the official languages of the country as well as in certain languages frequently spoken by cross-border communities or immigrant communities such as the Portuguese one. The the national government made available to the municipalities communication tools such as a help desk or toolboxes to make sure that the messages were passed on and came to, uh, came to the citizens. 86% of the municipalities' questions were satisfied of those tools. The local stakeholders that were questions in Luxembourg, municipalities, schools, police forces, Underline, nevertheless, a lack of consistency in the messages. Even though we don't have all the data yet, it's a difficulty that other OECD countries also um, had to cope with. Vertical coordination between the national government and municipalities and towns in Luxembourg worked quite well. 95% of the municipalities that responded think that they really benefited from the support of the central government, which they need in the framework of the management of the crisis. As the Secretary General said earlier, Luxembourg um, can be singled out because of the active involvement of the parliament in the crisis. That's a remarkable element that really secures the continuity of the democratic life of our nation. But this democratic continuity of the nation, even though it hinges largely on the action of the parliament, uh, there, it would be very useful to organize citizens' consultations uh, at, in times of crisis. And now, uh, now I'm going to give the floor to my colleague, Francesca Colombo, who's going to present the results. Thank you very much. Um, as it was mentioned already, if we look at the results of Luxembourg as compared to the other OECD countries. For example, the excess mortality rate that is compared to the mortality rate during the previous five years, we can see that the excess mortality rate in Luxembourg is among the lowest in the OECD countries. Nevertheless, we have to think the results over. Um, and break them down, especially if we look at the proportion of elderly people that were affected by the pandemic, we can see that among those aged more than 80 years old and those who resided in long-term care um, homes, the mortality rate is twice as high as the average of the OECD countries. So maybe we should take a closer look at 
long-term care homes. We need more reforms in that field, in that sector, and more attention. The indirect consequences of the pandemic in Luxembourg are also worrying. They were quite significant. It was mentioned already. Um, mental health was an issue, and diagnosis and normal health care or regular health care were very often postponed. For example, cancer screening tests, colon cancer test, breast cancer test, a screening, and also elective surgery. So all those, um, all the, the health care that was not directly linked to COVID was largely postponed. And that is an issue that should not happen again, whether, if possible. If we look at the health system on the whole, we can see that our health system has been quite flexible and has been able to adapt to the crisis situation. The responsiveness of the interministerial crisis unit that was mobilized and carried out many interventions, also an intensive screening of the different cases was set up as from the beginning of the pandemic, thanks to a range of actions that were carried out very early. And that really allowed reducing the number of cases and reducing mortality. Even though the hospital capacity uh, was put to the, to the test, and well, the number of beds was multiplied twofold in intensive care, the intensive care units and primary health care was intensified in order to be able to respond to other needs different from COVID. And also the vaccine campaign, the vaccination campaign was very successful and it enabled us to be prepared in terms of uh, the effects on the health system of the increase of the number of cases. But the pandemic highlighted structural weaknesses of our health system. We really need to be able to adjust more in the long run. And there is the, the issue of the resources, um, human resources, particularly in the healthcare sector. There were decisive measures in terms of mobilizing more healthcare staff. But Luxembourg is still very largely dependent on um, human resources coming from abroad. Our, um, the number of physicians we have on the Luxembourg territory is lower than the average OECD rate. We know that having enough human resources is the, the most important resource that is needed in order to increase the number of beds uh, and be able to take care of the patients, but it takes a long time to train healthcare personnel. There are other elements we should think over, for example, the purchasing a center that will set this purchasing center that was uh, put in place to buy critical products could be consoli consolidated. We also need an information system to have an information system that is able to steer the crisis in real time. And we also need to strengthen um, our uh, competence in terms of hygiene and medicines, the availability of medicines, and also the mental health strand should be looked at, especially among the elderly. In the OECD countries, that was really the last uh, sector that reacted uh, in the context of the crisis. Now, if I may now move on to the issue of employment. We can see that the pandemic, uh, the pandemic had a quite a deep impact on the labour markets in all the OECD countries, and Luxembourg was no exception to the rule. The number of hours worked in Luxembourg really dropped sharply during the second term 2020, but it has to be said that um, this um, drop was uh, lower than what was observed in France or in Belgium, and that can be explained by some of the measures. Uh, well, we had um, a large number of teleworkers that could continue working remotely, and we have a large proportion of workers who could benefit from partial unemployment mechanisms 
And these uh, enabled us to protect jobs. We know that two workers out of three could benefit uh, of this program. It was very important to protect employment, especially in sectors such as the building sector. Uh, also the hospitality sector and catering sector were thus protected. Now, if we move on to other provisions um, that were put in place to support the income of the households, we find many mechanisms to protect jobs and to protect livelihoods, such as paid leave, Paid leave played a significant role, and there was a, um, the mechanisms put in place were quite generous and had a broader coverage. Also, family uh, leave for extraordinary family reasons uh, were uh, granted, uh, and many people took advantage of that measure. The relatives of workers or workers themselves uh, could have um, get help when they had to take care of small children, for example, when daycare centers were closed. There was a quite good um, and easy access to unemployment subsidies, and there was a strengthening of income support measures. So we had all sorts of mechanisms that were put in place that enabled us to protect jobs and also enabled the population to have um, adequate incomes in that crisis period. The categories that benefited less from those measures are probably young workers and self-employed or freelance workers. The reduction of the number of hours worked for young people and temp workers was not so much um, taken care of by the partial unemployment mechanism. We can also see that freelancers or self-employed workers were excluded from the mechanisms that were put in place in order to protect jobs in Luxembourg, and self-employed or freelance workers had less access to um, sick leave, paid sick leave, and leave that was granted for extraordinary family reasons. So those, the mechanisms were not so efficient, did not apply so much to those categories of workers. I would li also like to um, underline the groups of population, the target groups that were affected more than others, whether because of mental health issues or employment issues. Uh, we know that the age, young people were most affected by job losses, and they were also part of the group who benefited less from unemployment subsidies that were granted in cases of job losses. So we may want to think about measures that could better protect that, that category of population in a future crisis. Thank you very much, Francesca. It's my turn now to present the main results of the study carried out by the OECD in the field of education. The, they focused on three main points. First of all, educational continuity in times of crisis, and then uh, the effects on the results of the students and the impact on the mechanisms in order to involve all the stakeholders. During the pandemic, Luxembourg was singled out um, thanks to its ability to keep schools open as much as possible, with only 48 days of closure of schools in basic education, against 81 days for primary school on average within the OECD countries, and 34 days of total closure for secondary education as compared to 94 days on average within the OECD. This, this decision is aligned to the international recommendations made by OECD uh, um, in the times of the pandemic. In those times of uh, total or partial closure, um, educational continuity was made possible by measures put in place by the government, such as a national digital infrastructure that was adapted to the situation and investments in education that took place before the crisis. Also, um, the, uh, the provision of additional digital resources uh, from the National Ministry of Education and its agencies. These efforts enabled Luxembourg students not to um, suffer significant 
decreases of their learning um, rate and their learning results. The annual standardized tests or exams uh, nevertheless observed um, worse results in the understanding of German in 2020 and 2021. Those um, losses could have been anticipated given the nature of the Luxembourg education system and the language plurality of its um, school population particularly for those students who don't speak Luxembourgese or German at home. And there were also effects on the workloads of students, teachers and parents who had to face um, exceptional circumstances in the long run for a long time. On the basis of the work carried out for this study, we realized that the good crisis, good crisis management in Luxembourg could, um, could be improved by undertaking a few reflections and, or, and considering um, certain improvements for the future. First of all, we need to give priority to opening new schools, but we also need to anticipate educational continuity solutions in the case of schools would have to close again. This goal depends, for example, on the strengthening of the capacity of the teachers to um, include technologies, digital technologies and skills in a, an educational toolbox, toolbox that should be broader. Then it is necessary to set up differentiated support forms in order to um, hamper the um, increase of school inequalities in crisis times, in times of crisis. In the short run, the ministry should strengthen its, its proactive support measures to the benefit of the most vulnerable students first. In the medium to long run, deeper changes of the educational system should continue, for example, following the model of European schools. Then, the distribution of management and equipment responsibilities um, should be rethought, especially in the field of digital infrastructure and schools themselves, and they should be better distributed between the state that um, directly supplies secondary schools and the municipalities that provide equipment to the schools. We saw that the response in terms of uh, digital infrastructure resources uh, was very differentiated and varied from school to school and from municipality to municipality. As to the strengthening of the commitment of the stakeholders, the OECD recognizes the importance of the role played by the governance structure, COVID-19 and education. Um, two systemic recommendations. Um, are about the need to include the education sector in the interministerial crisis unit and set up as early as possible a stable governance, a crisis governance structure in the field of education. Then, in times of crisis, it is necessary to find a balance, to strike a balance between consultation times of the stakeholders to make decisions and communication of decisions. Finally, it is important to continue strengthening the information infrastructure in order to properly measure the changes that, that are uh, caused by the crisis through time. As a conclusion, we think that the government should have supported more the purely educational aspect during the crisis and better take into account the wear and tear effects of the long, long duration of the crisis on the different stakeholders. But our overall evaluation is positive. Luxembourg had a successful crisis management in the field of education. Schools stayed, uh, remained open very often. Educational continuity was secured in close, closing times, during the times when the schools were closed, and the learning outcomes were on the whole stable. So we invite Luxembourg to keep building on these very successful efforts in order to, deep, to reach deeper objectives and um, long-term, fairer and better quality objectives for all the students. Oh. Within the evaluation of the crisis response, we have also assessed economic measures that have been put in place to support um, firms during the crisis, companies. Government action was decisive from the start of the crisis. The government uh, intervened by introducing business support measures equivalent to over 3.9% of the GDP. These um, fiscal measures, budgetary measures, are in line with those of our, our other OECD countries. As other... 
uh, countries of the OECD, Luxembourg increased its public expenditure to strengthen support measures. But the increase of the overall debt was lower than in other OECD countries. Tax um, income was resilient, as you can see on the left uh, graph. The, the economic life of Luxembourg has remained quite dynamic during the whole crisis. In order to evaluate the impact of the measures, we have created a database with data collected by the Ministry of Economics, among others, and I would like to thank these two institutions for their help. The data show that interventions took place quite early. The digitalization of the procedures contributed to the efficiency and the promptness of the responses to the crisis. And the time that elapsed between requests for support um, and the granting of the support of the subsidy was shortened thanks to, thanks to the digitalization of the procedure. Um, there is a need to increase the digitalization of administrative procedures in order to reduce um, the times. The companies most targeted by the measures were not the less profitable or the more profitable. The companies that were profitable during the crisis but that were affected during the crisis were first targeted. This shows that there was a proper targeting of the measures. The targeting limited the risks for those companies. And in uh, today's uh, context, there's more uh, support measures. It is important to continue these measures. It is also important to look at the most affected sectors in order to reinforce resilience of the economy of Luxembourg. There is a recommendation to use all available data to, to um, assess what will be uh, and needed uh, for the future, as I will uh, draw the conclusions. As a conclusion, of course, we, we, we only had time to present uh, a limited number of recommendations and conclusion. We could have talked um, about the performance of um, diplomatic services and, and um, the, the, the enlargement of so, some measures, we, we, we focused here on the most important conclusions. What did we learn from uh, the experience here in, in, in Luxembourg? It's important now to, to, to tell other OECD countries what did we learn in Luxembourg, good practices and limits. There is a need um, for a, a strong leadership from the central state. And at the same time, it is important to work with local collectivities, the civil society, the private sector, in order to come with responses that are good for the whole society. It is important to preserve the work done in Parliament, and it was a model here in Luxembourg. If you look at other countries, of course, this is not enough in order to ensure the continuity of democracy in a time of crisis when decisions are made very quickly with um, um, lighter decision uh, making processes. It's important to, um, to talk, uh, to consult, um, and, and also to draw the conclusions um, afterwards just like we're doing here today. And it is going to help us uh, target the measures for the future. And of course, uh, ordinary periods must be used in order to prepare for future crises. We do not hope there will be crises in the future, but there will be. Unfortunately, there will be crisis, climate crisis, among others. We see that uh, in Luxembourg, there's uh, a high trust of citizens in public structures and that the finances were healthy before 2020, before the crisis. It's important in ordinary periods, it's important to reinforce trust. It helps during crises. 
I'd like to conclude once again, I'd like to thank the team of uh, uh, the ministries in Luxembourg uh, who helped. Um, and uh, again, uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your trust also. We open to your questions now. This is not the third part of the press conference. I'd like to invite the Prime Minister to join us again on the podium. Please, if you have any question. I have a question concerning health structures. There's a, a high death rate, mortality rate. You have some recommendations about that topic. Uh, could you tell us more about the conclusions to draw from um, that problem uh, here? Um, we also talked about uh, limiting uh, liberties, uh, limiting the, the, the freedom of people. What are the conclusions that, uh, in more details? For uh, long-term health care in all uh, OECD uh, countries, the impact was very uh, negative. At the beginning of the crisis period, uh, uh, a lot was done for hospitals, but not as much for long-term care. And uh, we saw that in all OECD countries. In uh, some uh, countries, um, we, um, well, the, the structures are, are different, but we see that there's um, a problem of structures. We now need to reinforce human resources in hospitals, but it's hard to recruit staff, it's hard to retain staff, working conditions are hard, um, some staff is not uh, trained uh, well enough. So there are barriers and obstacles and a part of the health system must now be consolidated. More human resources, more staff, better protocols, um, better uh, care responses for transmissible diseases also, that um, hospitals can be more efficient. And the elderly, uh, some uh, older people live at home, and it's important to bring care uh, to these people. Most of the time they're isolated and live alone. It's important to help them and and, and that do not suffer too much from isolation and mental health problems. Unfortunately, this is a situation that we see in all OECD countries. Now concerning freedom, in a context of a crisis, decisions must be made very quickly, and decisions are hard to be made. Um, the elderly must be protected from the disease, and in a lot of countries, it was forbidden to visit the elderly in hospitals, for instance. Now, it is important to, to look at this and see how we can improve those mechanisms in the future in order to protect people from being infected, but uh, also to, to make sure that family members can visit their, their parents or grandparents in in, um, in all people's homes. Um, a lot of decisions uh, um, must be made in a crisis, but they must remain temporary, of course. But the mortality rate in uh, medical centers and in all people's homes in Luxembourg is one of the higher, um, highest rates in uh, OECD. Do you have uh, more ideas to present? What could have been done better? We now must 
we, we, we must hire more people, more staff, more human resources, and come with better systems in case of a pandemia. Um, hygiene conditions must be improved in hospitals. We need to have more indicators. We must verify um, and see how we can reduce um, negative uh, medical impacts of the, the situation. Uh, a lot of things need to be uh, consolidated, structures, staff, human resources, and we now have to, to have the, the, the right, uh, we, we need to take the uh, better measures in order to alleviate the impact of a pandemic. We uh, didn't have enough masks at the beginning. Now, that problem is over. We have uh, more protection uh, instruments. We are now better prepared if there is uh, a crisis in the, in the future. How do you explain that very high rate in Luxembourg compared with other countries? The, the response came a little later in Luxembourg than uh, um, in other countries and, and a little later in uh, all people's homes than in hospitals, for instance. Most staff in the care sector come from neighboring countries. And, uh, you know, in a time of a crisis, if France had closed their border or Germany had closed their borders, um, would have been in a very difficult situation here. What is going to happen uh, in the future? How can we prepare for that? Well, closing borders is not a good idea in such a context because uh, a virus does not know borders. If you close borders between countries, you uh, encourage countries not to say that they have a, a pandemia. And of course, uh, labor, the labor market in Luxembourg is, is, is particular. There must be more cooperation with neighboring countries, also in a time of a crisis. And there was such a system, there was cooperation, a lot of people were mobilized, and that's how uh, Luxembourg um, could face the, the crisis. Now, in the future, um, it will be important to uh, make sure that borders remain open because uh, viruses uh, do not see borders. It's important to coordinate with neighboring country, countries It's, it's, it's especially important for smaller countries and economies that depend a lot of uh, depend a lot on the workforce coming from neighboring countries. The opposition in Parliament criticized by saying there was no law uh, before. Uh, the pandemic and, and the, still no law after the first uh, um, lockdown, uh, no, no new legislation was passed. Shouldn't we have um, uh, extra laws in order to um, face future crises better? If you look at the UK, for instance, They had a general governance approach in case of a crisis. The role of parliament was defined. This could be a lesson. This could be an insight for other countries. It's important to think of a governance system that can be put into place automatically in case of a systemic uh, pandemia, for instance. A lot of countries have parts of systems in order to prepare, but it's not, in most cases, it's not a systemic system. Uh, it's not a systemic 
they're not systemic measures, but it could be a good idea for all countries. On this uh, question, I understand, of course, um, um, uh, medical care, but there are some uh, nuances in the report. Um, healthcare at home is very well developed in Luxembourg. We help people to live at home and in, in medical care centers, in old people's homes, the, um, I mean, there's probably less people than, than in other countries. Yeah, well, we'll we, the idea is to make sure that people can live at home. It's, it's better for them if they can uh, be, um, if they can, if they can live at home. The sentence is that uh, long-term health care system in Luxembourg favors um, the fact that uh, people uh, remain at home. It's only um, very old people with comorbidity that are in old people's homes. It, it's not, it's not uh, um, the fact that uh, more people died. Uh, it's just because in our institutions, um, the elderly um, have more comorbidity than, than other uh, patients, than other, um, all the people in other countries. I have a question for the Prime Minister and Mrs. Lennart. Last week, OECD came with a report on digital governance. This report here is more about managing COVID. Is this a method that you want to, to use again in the future? Will there be more reports from OECD in the future? Is this a new method for you to analyze what the government does? Yes and no. We're not married with OECD. We are lucky to have an independent international institution. They have an external approach. An external glance. If I uh, ask uh, the big in uh, in Luxembourg, uh, they're going to criticise me, and they say I'm not objective. Or oh, there's a risk that I'm going to be criticised for that. So internally, uh, we can of course do some uh, some studies and reports, but we want an external glance. We want something non-national. This is an international situation. And uh, OECD, they can compare with other OECD members. And we do not have uh, that data. Some of our auditors, they do not have access to the same data. So we're talking about Luxembourg, and we want to compare with other countries. This is an international crisis. So it's important to uh, call upon an international institution because they have more resources. Can we get to the, the, the current situation today? There's more cases uh, today. Are you going to take uh, measures again, uh, wearing the mask in public transport, uh, more um, vaccines? What, what, uh, what would be your measures? Yes, my answer is, uh, in order to, to, to answer your first question, yes, I, I think it's really important to evaluate public policies and it's important to ask external institutions. And um, in order to answer your second question, yes, well, the situation is, is calm. Uh, and if uh, some measures need to be uh, taken, they will be taken. Uh, uh, but uh, um, of course, the, uh, today, uh, um, yes, well, this is a new season, there are more cases, but uh, the situation is, is, is rather quiet in hospitals. The, uh, today, there's no need for, for more measures. We, 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 we talk about COVID every week in our governmental meeting. We uh, we um, still have that item on our agenda every week. I'd like to thank Mr. Feller. We are looking at what structures we need in order to uh, continue vaccination, to 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 keep on working on 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 the problem. And uh, uh, I'd like uh, uh, to thank you for uh, what you did uh, for uh, the coordination together with Mr. Leonard. 
the, um, the health ministry for health and and um, the coordination center covid has not disappeared yet we have people in hospital we have covid patients in hospitals people some people are sick and uh, we uh, see that the impact is not the same as the beginning of the crisis but it doesn't mean that covid is is away in our public debate here in Luxembourg, um, the parties, the, the opposition parties, uh, criticized uh, some of the measures taken, lockdowns, uh, and so on, isolation measures, curfews. Maybe, maybe more, more evaluations will come on, on the, the, the consequences of those lockdowns and curfews. Of course, this is a highly political topic in a lot of OECD countries. I don't know if, if more evaluations will be done. It was not in the heart of our evaluation. We looked at the social impact, the economic impact, the educational impact, the impact on the economy of the country um, after the measures taken during the crisis. Concerning restrictions, lockdowns and curfews, uh, I'd like to thank, well, today is a thank you day. Uh, we had another group and uh, they looked at the impact, <clears throat> the consequences of the restrictions economically, socially, mentally. The, the, the latest evaluation came yesterday. The Constitutional Court said no measure went against the Constitution. No measure that we took went against the Constitution. This is good for democracy. We, we didn't take things lightly. Every measure was voted in, in, in Parliament. The Constitutional Court decided you didn't go against the Constitution. Uh, the OECD doesn't say it was good, it was not good, but we, we see the result. Well, not up to me. It's, it, it's a demand that is uh, repetitive. Are you doing more assessments? Maybe you talked about it uh, in the Chamber of Deputies. You talked about the uh, uh, health impact of lockdowns. Well, we have, we have different studies. We have uh, a lot of scientists working uh, with us. Uh, WHO is looking at, at the topic. And what we do is that we follow up what they do, their studies, uh, in order to, to look at the benchmarks. And then the next step, well, this, this was a major step. Uh, a lot of people were mobilized to, to carry out this evaluation. Now uh, we are going to be part of a peer review in uh, WHO, our first uh, country did it, Portugal, if I remember well, then Luxembourg is looking at uh, this project also. We now need a little time to, to, to rest and then uh, we'll look at the, the other impacts in, in the near future, yes. So restrictions, I mean, your, your, your report did not focus on those uh, restrictions. OK, now, for long-term health care services, will Luxembourg look at the structure and changes in the structure? What is the government about to do? In uh, OECD, we do not have general conclusions for all OECD countries. We need to um, we need to to look at other countries at the same time. Um, we are looking at the uh, at the problems. Uh, we we we're looking at the the, the changes that are needed. Um, as far as we we concerned is is at at the beginning is 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 governance. How was Parliament um, consulted? 
how uh, were decisions made. This is what we looked at. We looked at the, 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 the governance system behind measures. The report has just been presented. I know you're in a hurry. I'm also always in a hurry, but I would like first to give it to my colleagues from the government and talk about it with them in order to be able to share with you the conclusions of the whole government later on. Just another quantitative question. You said that Luxembourg was the first country um, requesting that evaluation from the OECD. How many countries have requested it and how many reports have already been published? None, because Luxembourg is the first report and we were very happy because it's, we set the example in terms of transparency and we also expose our situation to the other 37 countries. These reports are read by all member countries of the OECD. So we really, we really set the example. We're talking with other countries about similar evaluation processes, but for the time being, there is no official candidate to another uh, such evaluation. Another, uh, one more question on this point. Have you defined the scope of this study or did the government request that the study focus more on governance? It's still being discussed. We always have a discussion between um, the government and the OECD. We define together what seems important to us. For us, it's quite um, extraordinary because four directorates of the OECD have been working together, so it's a huge collective exercise um, carried out by the OECD, and each directorate had their own priorities, so the priorities of our committees, that is of the 38 member countries uh, in certain fields. So we try to make sure that what we do for a country uh, regarding one country is consistent, is in consistency with the priorities of the other uh, 37 countries. That's how we, we got to this report. But just to be clear about this, the government never said, no, you can't do this, or you mustn't do this. So I would like to thank you Thank the OECD and thank you for this study. It is going to um, go through the different procedures of the government and the parliament. Uh, I would like to thank you for your trust. I think it's, it's been very important to be able to look at what we've done well and be able to accept that we haven't done everything well. We've made, as polit politicians do make mistakes, and it's very important to be able to learn from one's mistakes or learn from what was previously unknown and from fields in which we didn't have any experience in the past. Thank you very much.